Welcome to worship at Lakeview Lutheran Church. We are a place that welcomes everybody, so you are welcome to uh, join us at some time when we eventually return to the sanctuary, and you certainly are welcome to join us on this video, either by Facebook, Vimeo, or YouTube. You're invited to share this service with others who may also appreciate that. A couple of announcements for you today. Um, first of all, we have a red, quarterly Red Cross blood drive coming up on June 16th, and the drive will be in East Hall from noon until 5 p.m. If you are interested and able, which we'd appreciate, to donate blood, you're invited to contact the Red Cross via um, the internet and sign up for a time slot or else call the church office and sign up for a time slot through that means. There, is, there will be no walk-ins at this blood drive. You must have a reservation. And then just a couple of things to be aware of for the drive because of safety. You must wear a mask. You must, must practice social distancing while you're donating blood. And they ask that nobody but the blood donor comes into the building. So don't bring a child or a spouse or a friend. They'd have to stay outside. I would also ask that when you enter the building that you immediately use one of the restrooms by the door and wash your hands before you proceed. So please consider donating blood on June 16th. Second thing to tell you is that um, this past Tuesday was our evening to provide the warm hot meal for the Porchlight Men's Shelter, scalloped potatoes and ham, along with cold breakfast items. And because the shelter is doing things differently during the pandemic, we, were not, we did not provide that meal. Now, Porchlight is having to expend some additional money during this time because organizations like ours are not providing meals. So our Congregation Council has decided that we will receive a special offering for Porch Light in lieu of providing food, and we'll receive that offering between now and June 1st. If you'd like to contribute, and we hope that those who are able will, if you'd like to contribute, please write a check to Lakeview. Identify that it's for Porch Light. You can send it in the mail. You can bring it over and put it in the mailbox, or if somebody's here, you can pound on the door, um, and somebody will come and receive that. Or you can go to the Lakeview website, lakeviewlutheranchurch.org, click on the Giving tab, then click on the Vanco Give Plus tab. I'm, I'm saying more than need be, it's very easy. And then once you're there, you can click on the, your wish to donate to Porchlight, and you can give by check or debit or credit card um, through that Vanco Give Plus system on the website. So please consider making some kind of a contribution to Porchlight in lieu of us providing food and volunteers this month. And finally, I just want to say, um, in our secular world, it is indeed Memorial Day weekend. Um, we remember all those who have served and who are serving, um, and I encourage you to take some time throughout the weekend and do that. But I also encourage you, since it's sort of the beginning of summer, not that it feels like it, but sort of the beginning of summer, to continue to practice um, those very important um, conditions placed, put out by the um, Center for Disease Control. Wear your mask, social distance, stay out of crowds, stay out of groups, um, wash your hands, all of those kinds of things. We want to continue to keep safe um, despite what might be happening in the world around us. Today also is our opportunity to lift up our graduating high school seniors here at Lakeview. Um, and I really hope that you will acknowledge them some way. You are welcome to send them notes, send them small gifts, send them cards, um, whatever. R remember, the class of 2020 is an unusual class. Um, boy, and the ones from here are really unusual. But they're unusual because um, they're leaving high school without ceremony, applause, parties, all of those kinds of things that all of us looked so forward to. So this morning, we want to recognize those four individuals. And I'm going to do that in alphabetical order. Our first um, recognition is Anna Grace Courier. And Anna is the daughter of Angie and Travis Courier, who are members here at Lakeview, of course. Her sisters are Cameron and Addie. Anna will graduate from Madison East High School. Um, be careful, Anna. There are a lot of people in this congregation who have graduated from Madison East, and we've all seen how they've turned out. 
Anna plans to attend either Edgewood College or UW-Milwaukee, since UW-Milwaukee is one of my alma maters from graduate school. I encourage her to go there. And she would like to study psychology in the fall. Second is Paul Dupre. Paul is the son of Nancy Stilwell and Chris Dupre. He has an older brother, not a lot older, but a little older, Anthony, who many of you also know. Paul graduated a little early for his class from Madison College, and he does um, indeed plan to attend Madison College in the fall, where he hopes to study graphic design. You may have seen Paul down at Beef Butter Barbecue, um, because that's where he's worked recently. Quincy Evans is the son of Jen and Josh Evans. Quincy has a younger brother named Pierce. Quincy is going to be graduating from Mon Monona Grove High School, and I have to say that in my 19 years at Lakeview, this is the first Monona Grove High School graduate we've had. Quincy plans to continue to work for Madison Metals this fall, and he'll work in the trades, and then he intends to attend school to work toward a career in the HVAC industry, which we are very grateful for because as we look at putting a new boiler in this place, we know that good HVAC people are difficult to find, and we hope Quincy will be one of those in the future. Ben Lubke, actually, Benjamin is the son of Amy and Mike Lupke. He has a brother uh, a year older who is Dane Lupke. Ben will be graduating from Wanakee Senior High School. I didn't even know Wanakee had a school system, but he'll be graduating from it, and he plans to attend UW Lacrosse in the fall, where he would like to study business. Congratulations to all four of these graduates. You'll hear a little bit more about them in my sermon, but at this time I invite us to prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prayer. <laughs>
The disciples asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that God has set by God's own authority. You will receive the power when this Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We are called to be the hands and feet and voice of Jesus as we await God's restoration. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Holy God, thank you for making us yours and for your gift of salvation in Jesus. Now open our eyes to the tools you have given us to be your disciples on earth. Give us the will to use these tools to strive for unity within your people. Transform our hearts from the desire to condemn to the desire to love. We lift to you all young people today, particularly those who will be graduating from high school soon during this strange time. Give them encouragement. Help them remember that you invite them to know you as their faithful rock. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, Lynn, or Jean Mindal and Kathy Benson will sing Laudamus Te, which translates into praise to you. Next weekend, we celebrate the Festival of Pentecost, and the Gospel reading for today comes from the 17th chapter of St. John. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. 
I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I have come from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name, the ones you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Anna, Paul, Quincy, and Ben. This may be the first graduating class here at Lakeview where I can say that I baptized each one of you as little, little babies right over there at the font in front of the sanctuary. I carried each one of you in my arms down the center aisle of the sanctuary at the conclusion of your baptisms. I remember Ben peed on my arm the day that he was baptized. I'm sure his mother told him to do that. So I have known each one of you since day one. I've watched you along with the rest of this congregation play with toys while you were sitting out there in the pews or chairs as we have today. And then you began Sunday school and attended vacation Bible school. I think you all came to Camp Sugarbush that year, stayed overnight in the church basement, and we made our own toothpaste. As Sunday school kids, we got to listen to you sing during worship, and we enthusiastically clapped for you when you were finished, regardless of how it sounded, because you were just so darn cute. We watched you in special Christmas services. Now here's a bit of information you might not all know. Quincy played the baby Jesus the year he was born. His parents were Mary and Joseph, and they laid Quincy on a bed of straw in the manger. And then we watched you in the Passion Weekend musicals, where you were often dressed up like shepherds or other townspeople with all the bathrobes and odds and ends of pieces of material that are downstairs in the storage closet. You seemed to love tying things around your heads during that event. Then came confirmation class and middle school events like going to that miniature train barn in Schulzburg that Saturday. And of course, we can't forget those winter retreats, can we? In Green Lake, at those retreats, I got to enjoy seeing you put your faces in tubs of flour to try to find the one marshmallow that was in there, or eating Twinkies where the cream had been removed and replaced with horseradish sauce. Or at Green Lake, I got to enjoy watching you carry live crickets in your mouths across the room or eat a blended McDonald's Happy Meal. A wonderful game. I think I got to see each one of you puke at some time in that big garbage can that we always dragged out and sat by the games um, because we knew that people would be needing it. There was always great pride in puking at the Saturday night games. And then there were the summer youth trips. Most of you participated in mission trips in the National Youth Gathering. One year you came to our cottage for a picnic and swimming in the lake after we spent the day painting the senior housing on the Menominee Indian Reservation. And I'll remember that day. It was so very hot and you did so well. Now you know what I learned from all those experiences over the past 18 years. I learned something important. I learned that you are each incredibly different people. Anna loves to stick her head in tubs of flour, while Quincy finds that repulsive. But Quincy does love to smear red lipstick on his lips. Ben will never grow up probably to be a star of a Broadway musical but he sure is good at sports. Anna talks a lot, 
I can say that everybody in her family knows it, which probably helps her to be a good writer. Paul, on the other hand, is pretty quiet, but he's great at waiting on people down at Beef Butter Barbecue. Quincy is not very good at catching pigeons on the streets of New York City. In fact, he can't do it. But he certainly can catch a baseball. And I could go on and on and on with this list. You are each unique individuals. You each have been fearfully and wonderfully knit together by God in your mother's womb. And now you each go out into the world as distinctive, one-of-a-kind young adults. And I, for one, will always celebrate all of the gifts that you have brought to this congregation and to my life personally. I'm not sure if you realize it, but each of you has assisted me to learn new things about myself and to grow in my role as a person and as a parish pastor, and I thank you. But despite all of your differences, there is something that all four of you share in common. There is a part of each of you that is just like the other. Each one of you is a child of God. You're loved and redeemed, and you've been promised the gift of eternal life. That reading from St. Saint St. John today is a prayer, and it's a prayer that Jesus actually prays. And he prays for you, Anna, and Paul, and Quincy, and Ben, and all of the rest of us. Jesus prays for our unity in God. Jesus reminds us in that prayer that God gave him to each one of us, so that we could know God. Jesus has come into our lives so that we can know the outrageous love that God has for each of us and that promise of eternity that God has given to each of us. So despite all the things that make us and you different individuals, this is what makes us all the same. Our sameness, our unity, is one of the things that we celebrate every time we're able to come forward in this congregation and share in the holy meal together. And we will do that again someday. You four graduates are entering a very unusual world. Oh yeah, we've got all the usual crap in the world that's been going on forever. But right now, you depart from high school without fanfare or unfortunately without ceremony. And you begin a new chapter in your life, unsure of what will happen regarding your educations and your jobs and the job markets in the upcoming weeks and months. Like each of you, we are all living in a world, this world of instability and unsureness. And it can make us anxious sometimes, and it can even make us feel hopeless sometimes. That's why this prayer that we have from Jesus today is so important. Jesus wants us to live in hope. He wants us to remember the love of God and the promise of salvation and the hope of eternal life even right now in the midst of the world's corruption and this ugly pandemic. So as you begin this new chapter, graduates, please remember this. Your parents love you. And even though you are 18 or soon to be 18 and you're out of high school and you're feeling like you're all grown up, your parents are going to continue to give you guidance and direction and some rules because they want to protect you and they want what is best in life for you. So deal with it. And remember also that we, your family, here at Lakeview, we're always here for you as well. We too love you. And we have wrapped our arms around you ever since you came um, into, over, into to that font over there, that baptismal font over there. And we will continue to wrap our arms around you in adulthood. And finally, remember, God always loves you. God gave you a Savior.
God promises you eternity, and God walks with you every day of your journey. When you face uncertainty, like all the rest of us do, you will have much support if you accept it. Don't forget that. And one more thing. I hope that when you become pastors, and I always hope that somebody in that graduating class will, I, I hope that when you become pastors, or maybe voluntary youth leaders in your own congregation someday, I hope that you will enjoy watching confirmation kids drink a blended McDonald's Happy Meal just as much as I have. So, peace out, graduates. Jeez, I'm cool. Amen. The words to the hymn, You Are Mine, will appear on your screen.
join together in professing our faith using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. All-knowing God, thank you for your church and for the assurance that it will remain a community with you present, even during these weeks when we cannot gather. We pray that all people who return to gatherings and to work sites will not be selfish and will use wisdom as they continue to be concerned for others. Bring rest to those in the medical profession who are dealing with the coronavirus patients. Today we lift to you Anna, Paul, Quincy, and Ben. We give thanks for their unique personalities and gifts. Give them guidance to use these gifts as they enter a new phase of life. Encourage all high school graduates. Move us to end hunger and homelessness in our community. We give thanks for Porchlight and the work that they can do through our donations. We pray for an end to gun violence. Enlighten all political leaders to work together for the safety and well-being of the world, because you came to bless all nations. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember today those who risked their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad, and assure them of your never-failing strength. Comfort those who grieve, particularly those who are mourning loved ones and unable to participate in funerals, memorials, and celebrations of life at this time. Bring healing wholeness to all who are sick, including Janet, Georgia, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. And together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you now and forever. Amen. Jesus loves you and calls you to love others. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is, We Are All One in Christ. The English words and the Spanish words will appear on your screen.